song in your presence in your presence Lord
Apostolic Tabernacle live stream. Thank you for joining us wherever you are in your home or in your car, or wherever you find yourself tonight. We're glad that you're with us online. We really are saddened that we're not able once again to join together in person for midweek Bible study. We look forward to gathering together in the house of the Lord very, very soon. This is a serious time to really be getting a hold of God. We have 24 confirmed COVID cases in our own church family. That's just members of this church and many, many more if you count those who are connected to our church family in some way. And we want to pray for each and every person. We've been in contact, constant contact, and I want to thank everyone who's been working to bring food and and medicine uh, to those that are are battling COVID right now. Our church family really is tremendous the way we work together and love one another and care for one another. Thank you for that. I want to call out 
some of these names of people that we need to be praying specifically for. And I know you might have a a need that's completely separated from COVID tonight. We're praying for you as well. But I'm going to list the, the names of individuals who are battling COVID right now. And some of these individuals are are very serious and critical and even have pneumonia and in the hospital so we want to ask the Lord to help them Tina Bradbury Marissa Dorothy as Tina's mother Turner Middleton Yolanda Newton the Henry family brother and sister Hurst sister Hurst is in the hospital right now Nikita Duffus sister Duffus Michaela Duffus Brother Baron Pope especially needs our prayer tonight. Brother and Sister Waldrop, both of them need our, our, very, our very sincere prayers tonight. Sister Guzman, Brother Collins, Brother and Sister Pinder, Brother and Sister Arias, Brooke, and Elsie Gaspard are all battling COVID as we speak, and we're going to lift them up in prayer and also going to pray for your need as well let's pray God in your name I pray that healing virtue would begin to move in every one of these cases oh God Lord I pray that you would restore breath to their lungs and that their oxygen levels would be returned to normal I pray that fevers would go down I pray God that that you would begin to restore people back to health and push this virus out of their system and build their immunity, oh God. And I pray that you would protect the rest of our saints, Lord, that they would would remain free of this virus. And I pray that you would keep your hand of protection upon us all. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank Sister Juana Ifendu for being here tonight and running the live stream and also last Sunday and all of the hard work and time, effort, and energy that she puts into making sure that we can have this ministry available to us even in very difficult times like this. Thank you, Sister Juana. appreciate it. I want to thank Talmadge and Julia for running cameras tonight and, and all who have done so during these COVID times. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. A special note that you need to jot down. We will be sending a calling post to remind you and just to connect with everyone. Uh, But we will not be having in-person service this Sunday. I'm going to say that again. We will not be having in-person services this Sunday. It's just uh, too soon. We have too many new cases of COVID. And it seems like we hear uh, of more every day almost. And we just don't feel like the timing is right. We will have a live stream this Sunday at 11 a.m. 11 a.m. We'll be having live stream Sunday morning worship. So be sure to carve out time to be in that service in your home. And, uh, and not, not, just, not just while you're eating cereal, but uh, carve out time where you can be participating, involved, worshiping, and connected as best you can. I know it's hard when we're not physically in the building together, but the very best that you can as a family to be connected to the live stream. And I know that the Holy Ghost is going to move in that service as well. I want to tell you, and it's important during times like these, and I'm thankful that we have ways to be faithful in our giving, even when we're not able to be here and and have the offering plate passed. But you can give at aptabupc.com forward slash give. That's on the screen, aptabupc forward slash give. You can text the word give to 678 Eight four six six five two two. What I'm about to tell you is not on the screen, so you'll need to write this down. If you would like to send checks to physical checks uh, in your tithes and offerings during this this hard time, you can do so and mail them to P.O. Box eighty five, 
Jonesboro, Georgia, 30236. Thank you for being faithful in your giving and your tithes and offerings. It's much appreciated. Thank you for loving the kingdom of God. Looking forward to hearing a word from our pastor. And at this time, our first lady, Sister Rebecca French, is coming and she's going to sing a special, I Give You Jesus.
right, let's grab our Bibles. Tonight we are looking at 1 Peter chapter 5, and our lesson is entitled, He Cares for You. He Cares for You. We're going to uh, send out our sympathies and our concerns for each of you that are battling COVID. You know, sometimes we don't understand, but no matter what the need is, I give you Jesus. He's the answer. He's already working on your behalf, and he cares for you. Now, we're going to look at 1 Peter 5 and 5. I'm going to read it here and follow along with me. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. So there's the first verse that is the context for verse 7. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So the context is that humble surrender, yielding ourselves to God, uh, then introduces us as the people of God to whom he gives himself and cares, casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. So be clothed with humility, Humble yourselves. So those two components from verse 5 and 6. Then verse 7. Humble yourselves in verse 6. Under the mighty hand of God. Casting all your care. or Throwing your care upon the Lord. Because where else are you going to go? You can't. The devil's not going to help you. This world is not going to be your, satisfy your heart. But you put your care upon the Lord. Because he careth for you. Now, many times it's difficult for us to, we wonder, we, we ask the question, does God really know? And uh, why do things happen in our lives? And so we're going to take a, a quick look at this concept of God's care for us. Now, first of all, uh, merimna in the Greek, as you see here in uh, the slide, your, uh, your care means all of your anxiety. This word merimna is, has to do, for example, in Mark chapter 4, the cares of this world. Things that, like sickness and concerns. Uh, in fact, concerns is one of the ways of translating merimna. Anxiety or worry. The things that worry you worry God. Not because he's worrying, but he's concerned about the things that affect you. And so it is. You know, a child, a baby may be very, very small and, and the, its needs are totally different from that of an adult. And yet the, the mother, the father, they take responsibility for the, for the need or the care of that of that child and so it is we're his child and we're in a world that's full of care and yet he he takes care of us so he cares for us and we can cast all of our concerns upon him whatever they may be there's nothing too hard for God and the devil is a liar now we're in a world where there's sickness and trouble and you, maybe you're not sure how you're going to pay the bills you're not sure how you're going to get through tomorrow or maybe there are people in your life that are causing harm or trouble and we're in an age of violence and, and uh, a time when people worry about their futures and, and finances and so on but God cares about every single thing that is in your life. In fact, the uh, great uh, text of Scripture is that he even know, numbers the hairs uh, of our head. He knows all about us. <clears throat> and he cares for, uh, the Bible, Jesus said, consider the lily or the sparrow. And on and on. All of these things, if he cares for the lily, which he does because he created it, and he created you. This is one reason in the Lord's Prayer that he, we're to pray our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. As it is in heaven is everything there is functioning exactly as God created it to function. But here we're in a, a fallen, cursed world where sin is dominant. But God cares for us in the midst of this troubled world. So cast all your care 
upon him because he cares or has concern for you. This word in the Greek is melai. Now melai, if you use it a certain way with a dative, for example, then melai means to to be a concern the things that are a concern to me become a concern to God he he as it were takes it upon himself and this is a powerful concept it doesn't mean that God is belittled in some way of course we know that he robed himself in flesh and came into the world because he cares for us enough to come and die for us but he his uh, the things that matter to me matter to God. He even cares about whether your children have a desire to go to college and whether what their future is going to be. The very things that concern you concern God. Not the trivial uh, nonsensical things, but the things that matter to us matter to God. And so the, my concern becomes God's concern. And so he reaches down his hand. I want to pray right now that God will reach his hand and you will feel the touch of God right now. Father, I believe right now that your presence is speaking to lives and you're going to reach down into the home somebody that isn't sure what tomorrow will bring, but you hold tomorrow and you care about us, oh God. Even to our very last breath in this world, Lord, you keep us and you care for us. Amen. God cares for us. Now we're going to go to the next slide. We're going to look at two scriptures. Uh, first of all, and we're going to delve into the question of, the, of to care as a verb. So do you, do you care about something? And uh, as one way I said, you better care because if you don't, uh, <laughs> something's about to happen. So in other words, what, what does the verb care mean? Now, Zechariah 2 and 8 is a very powerful concept, which is a, uh, in the same vein of thought that we've just been talking about. And uh, the, the expression here, I recently preached a sermon called the apple of his eye, but it, I'm going to read the end of verse 8. He that toucheth you, God says, toucheth the apple of his eye. <clears throat> now, just in a nutshell, the reason it, it, apparently that this became a Bible concept was that when you stand before God, then you could see your own reflection in the eye of God, as it were. So that in the pupil of the eye of God, who of course is invisible, all of this of course is symbolic. but he that toucheth you is touching the very one that is in my eye, which means God has his eyes upon you. And don't think for a minute that he doesn't know what you're going through. God knows exactly what you're facing. Now, it seems like, you know, we'd like to have, you know, a million bucks and everything wonderful, never have a, a problem. Well, that's heaven, my friend. That's not going to happen here. But God still cares for us in the midst of this world. It's like Lazarus that was at the table and, uh, and the rich man wouldn't even give him the crumbs off of his table. I mean, it just uh, the, the heartlessness of the world, that's what that symbolizes. But the Bible says, he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. So whatever you're doing to a child of God, whatever is happening to the child of God is touching the very heart of God himself. Now let's take that a step further before we uh, look at Webster's here in terms of the verb care. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth. You listen to me today. The, the eye of God sees everything that goes on. And he, his eye, as it were, run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Everything before God. He knows even the, the aches and pains in your body. He knows the fears that you have. He knows the troubles that you're facing. He knows all about it. And he cares. And let me tell you, friend, the devil doesn't care. The devil is the one creating all of this. He brought it all on this. God gets blamed for it. People that don't even believe in God, blame God for what he's not doing. And that is causing all of this sinfulness and, and the woe and the curse that's in the earth. And, and yet God still cares enough to come into this world and bring salvation. So his eye sees it all to show himself strong. Now listen very, very closely here. Second Chronicles 16 and 9. To show himself strong 
in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. The apple of his eye. His concern is for his children. The devil's children and all the others as he loves everybody. You, you got to love everybody and God loves everybody. But the apple of his eye, uh, he cares for them in a way far beyond anything else that goes on in this world. So someone that says, I hate God, well, they're, they're, they're facing a world with the rejection of God. But a child of God that says, Father, I need you. Heal me, touch me, give me strength, Lord. Let me understand you and your word. Well, there's a powerful working that's going on in them because of God's care for them. You can cast your concerns and your cares upon him. Now let's look at uh, the, uh, the, the uh, scale of meanings of the word care from Webster's. First of all, the word to care means to be concerned or solicitous. All right, so we've already pretty well talked about that. That would sort of be the bedrock of the, of the definition, to be concerned. Or to have thought or regard. I don't know if you've uh, given much thought to the fact that God has thought about you. He thinks about you. Now, when you love someone, you think about them. You, you, uh, you fall in love, and, and the person that becomes the attention of your love, then you, you think about them, and you write them letters, and you put perfume on it, and things like that. You, you, you have a, a relationship with someone that you love, and you think about them, and that's how God thinks about We have a whole book in the Bible called, you know, the Song of Solomon, where he tells us he's thinking about his people because he loves them. Them and has regard for them. So I don't care what's happened to you. God has regard. You may be in a prisoner of war camp. God has regard for you. He's thinking about you. There's a song years ago they were singing, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. And so it is, you were on his mind. It also means, so we're now we're going down to various levels of meaning here, to be concerned, to have thought or regard, to be inclined to, which is another way of saying that he is always thinking about how to do something on your behalf. To be inclined means to be moved in a certain direction. Incline. To be inclined is to be moved in a particular direction. So it is that when God's people come to him and they cry out to him and say, forgive me, Jesus. I've been a sinner. I need you. He is inclined to your voice. He hears your voice. There could be a thousand things in this world keeping you from God. But when he hears your repentance, every devil in hell is absolutely silenced. And God hears your voice. Or to have an inclination or a liking for. Now we're, now we're getting to the real root of it. He that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. You know what the apple of his eye is. Even in English it's pretty clear what to be the apple of someone's eye means you're very special. And so it is. You may be the poorest of the poor, but in God's eyes you're the richest of the rich because he's inclined to you and he loves you. Or to have a fondness or affection for. And finally to make provision or to look out for. And I think this is how many of us hope that it means for him to care for us. Like, for example, someone might say, well, I'm going to take care of you. We usually mean by that that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help you in some way. I'm going to look out for you. I'm going to make provision for you. <laughs> and this is also, and I don't have time to develop it. I'm not trying to develop it. But the whole idea that the sparrow, every sparrow that falls, he sees it. He knows it. He knows the number of the hairs of your head. The lilies of the field he created and he knows all about them. If he cares about that, surely he cares about his own children. That, that, of course, is the point. So you can cast your care. Why don't you do that right now? Just in your mind, just say, Lord, I'm putting every concern upon you right now. Lord, I pray for these that COVID thinks they're going to, uh, to trouble. I come against COVID in Jesus' name.
And I believe you because you're the healer, Lord, of our body. Your blood was shed. Lord, you washed our sins and you heal us. Every stripe on your back was for the healing, Lord, of your people. And we feel that right now. Now let's move on to the word concern. All right, so it is Webster says that the word concern, and I just want to take it one more level. I'm almost done with this. To relate to. So God's concern means that even though he is the invisible, divine God of heaven, he relates to those who are his children. He relates to them in a very special way. And so he cares about you, and that means he loves you, and that he relates to you. Many people don't feel anybody really relates to them, but God is your, someone said, you ever heard the song, he's, the, he's my closest friend, or he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, because that's who God is. So also it means to be connected with, actually the word concern is from the what we call the late Latin, which means to be mixed. It's the it's a Latin word that means to mix things together. And so it is that God is uh, is concerned. He is he is mixed into our lives, so that when I have a need, He's right there. He's, he's, he's above me, beside me. He's, he's all around me when I don't know what to do. Suddenly I feel the, the touch of angels' wings and God has done something for my life. And so it is. He's connected with us or he's mixed in. I don't want to take too much liberty there, but it's exactly what that word came from, the Latin word mixed. To be of interest or importance to. So we're of interest to him. Not because, it, not like we're under a microscope, but because he loves us and, and everything. You know, when you love someone, you notice their hair, you notice uh, all kinds of things about them because of your, they're important to you. And that's what love does. That's why, that's why we love. That's why God gave a parents children so that they could see themselves in their children and love them. And that's what you ought to be doing. If you're not, you should be loving the people in your life. To interest, engage, or involve. And that, we're just going to have to leave it, but that is a tremendous aspect of concern. Can you say praise the Lord? Can you worship him just a little bit? Lord, you care about us. You know all about us. Somebody's hurting. Somebody's fearful tonight. But you, God, you have us in your eye, oh Lord. And you see us. Now, so let's talk about how God's care is. Uh, involves him in our lives. Now, we're going to kind of, this is kind of our walk out of this lesson today. Now, first of all, I'm going to read from the New Living, Isaiah 41 and 10. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am your God. You see the connection? I'm, he's my God. And therefore, it's very personal. So why would I fear? He's my God. Death, death can't stop me. Death can't do it. Nothing in this world can hold me back. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with what? My victorious right hand. The right hand is a Hebraic, Hebraic symbol of power, God's power. So the power of God will be with you. Now, sometimes we think, well, I felt the power yesterday, but I, you know, today I got up and, and I had to brush my teeth and go through life. And, and, uh, and we need to continually remind ourselves that his victorious right hand is there to help us in our circumstance. Now, here's the key. Even when we are concerned what if God doesn't get it? What if he doesn't? Like the Hebrew boys, they're, they're throwing them into the fiery furnace. They even said, well, if God doesn't help us, we're still not bowing, you see. But God did help them. But in their minds, they had the secret was to believe and trust God and know that God is greater than the fire, regardless of what God actually does. Because you know that God knows what's best. He knows what's best for you. You may be praying for this and this, and you're like, you may be praying, oh, Lord, my job, my job. But God may have a better job. See, you're, you're, don't be disappointed in God. Look at the circumstance and say, my God knows everything. If, he, if that's not the job for me, he has one better. If that's not what God is going to do, then he's going to do something else because he cares for me. Now, let's look at how he gets involved. So he, he's, uh, he takes our fears 
He, he has a personal relationship. He strengthens us. He helps us. And he upholds us. What a powerful, powerful truth Isaiah said in verse 41. I mean, Isaiah 41, verse 10. Now, <clears throat> First Samuel. Now, this is familiar. David, of course, and Goliath. David said, moreover, this is how God gets involved in our lives. And I come against any devil that says we serve a different God today than David served. We serve the same God. He is the same God today as he was yesterday. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me. God is a deliverer. No matter what, that doesn't mean he makes people millionaires and, and everything we want and it's just me, me, me. No, it's not about me. It's about him. He's the Lord of my life. And he delivered me from the bear. Nobody saw it. I was out there on the hillside. But God delivered me from the lion. And that is what he will do for David in, in the very face of Goliath himself. And whatever Goliath you're facing, that's how God gets involved. He does things that are miraculous. Now let's look at Moses because I want to I wanna wrap this up here. Now let's take another step here. I, Exodus 14, and Moses said, notice David said, the, the, he delivered me from the paw of the lion and the bear, and he will deliver me from you, Goliath. That's what we need to do right now. We need to face Goliath. And say, this isn't going to happen because of who I am. This is going to happen because of whose I am. I am God's child and he cares for me. Praise God. The armies of Israel facing a great defeat. And God cared all about it. Moses said unto the people. Now we're looking here at the next slide. Stand still. So what God does, and I want you to think about it. I'm, I'm just about done here. But God doesn't need me. I, I know we Pentecostals get all excited and we're jumping up and down. And, and, uh, and, you know, it's a wonderful thing to be able to rejoice in the Lord and praise God. You know, so many churches are deader than doornails. And they have no freedom to worship. But, but it isn't all just about freedom and jumping and going. Because once in a while, you're facing something so dramatic that that we have to just stop and say God is going to demonstrate himself. So wherever you are, if you're in a circumstance that is like the Red Sea itself, and you cannot move the Red Sea yourself, you can't heal yourself, you can't do it yourself, but you're standing before that great body of water, and all of a sudden you stand still before your problem. And God says... I want you to see the salvation, the work, the mighty working God saving Israel from Pharaoh. And so you stop and you turn it over to Jesus. And that's what you've got to do. Sometimes you have to stand still. That's not all running aisles. Once in a while, you've got to stop and say, I don't, I don't know how I can take another step. And some of you are there right now. I want to pray for you. Father, I pray for each and every one, whatever their circumstance, whatever it may be, that as they stand before you, oh God, that they will see the mighty hand of God because we've humbled ourselves and we love you. Jesus and you care for us you care for each and every one and we give you praise so it may be time for you to stand still you know there's a lot of people in the bars and and running around all this worldliness and nonsense going on in our culture if they would stop and listen to the voice of God their lives could be changed but as long as you're chasing after the world and the wind there's not much hope of that. You have to listen to the voice of God. One more scripture, and then I'm going to close this out. I want to pray for you, and I want each and every one of you listening, and I don't know how many will, but perhaps in the next few days, some of you that have been too sick, you'll be able to turn this on, and you're going to hear, and God's going to minister to you. I believe it. I be prayed and asked God to minister to each and every one. But I want to talk about how the God who cares for us is able to bring you through the storm. And this is uh, the Psalm 107. And so I want to read just a couple of verses, verse 28 and 9. Then they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. You know, I've heard people say, well, I don't want to, I don't want to just run to the Lord in prayer just because I'm in trouble. 
<laughs> it's like, well, I should have prayed before I got in trouble. Okay, sure, you, you should have prayed before you got in trouble, but now you're in trouble. It's, you really better pray. How silly would it be to say, well, I'm falling off a cliff. I don't think I'll grab that branch over there. No, you need to grab a branch. If you're going down, grab hold of something. And so they cry unto the Lord in their trouble. Hallelujah. And he bringeth them out. That's what God does. He's able to bring you out of your distresses. He maketh, listen, he maketh the storm a calm. I love that. This is one of my all-time favorite uh, expressions in the Psalms. He maketh the storm a calm. In other words, your COVID is God's great victory. Our world, a sinner, like right now, someone, maybe one of your family members is deep in sin and, they're, and, and they can't, they're bound and chained all up. But what God does is he takes the one bound by chains, the gathering, and he breaks the chains and he makes them something altogether different. The storm and the wind and the howling, and then he makes it a calm so that the ways thereof are still. And so I speak to your your storm today and you need to pray with me our last slide i love this whoever did this little graphic i'm there to be commended so we need to claim deliverance tonight in jesus name tonight is the night you say well but the storm it's howling it's horrific look at the waves look at all the waters about us yes it's true but we claim deliverance in jesus name because he can make the storm a calm he can turn everything around it will be amazing how quickly he will turn things around step out by faith into God's will for your life. I'm talking to someone right now. It's time to step out. It's time to get rid of sin and get a hold of holiness. It's time to turn yourself in the direction of God. Walk toward heaven and quit walking towards hell and turn your life into what God intends for it to be and step out by faith and God will be with you. He will meet you there. God is your healer and your Pharaoh defeater. He is the God that is here tonight and he cares for you. Let's bow our heads together, shall we? We're gonna pray and be dismissed. Father, thank you for this opportunity on live stream tonight. I pray for each and every one. Lord, we have a whole lot of folks that are, that are, are you, most are doing okay. They're getting through it. But some that are really, really struggling. And I command in Jesus' name for Satan to let loose of them. I believe right now you can take Pharaoh and leave him behind in the very waters that were going to destroy us. But you're going to bring faith and calm out of the storm. We ask you to do it. I pray, Lord, that you will give strength, Lord, the need. Lord, help us to find ways to help our friends, our, our saints, and each and every one, Lord, that will, they will know that they are loved, not only by you, but by the saints of God. And I pray that you will keep us, Lord, bring us back, even though we're going to be out of service a few more days. I pray that you will bless and anoint, and the Holy Ghost will fall. Fill people with the Holy Ghost, whether they're in this building or not. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever, and you are moving in our midst and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. God bless you. We love you, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Keep praying for one another in Jesus' name. God bless each and every one.